ओके सो वेलकम एवरी वन टू दिस नेक्स्ट लेक्चर टूडे वी विल स्पेंड सम टाइम ऑन फिनिशिंग समथिंग स्मॉल अबाउट डिस्क्राइबिंग फंक्शन नेमली अबाउट सफिशियंट कंडीशन फॉर एग्जिस्टेंस ऑफ पीरियोडिक ऑबिट्स एंड सफिशियंट कंडीशन फॉर नॉन एग्जिस्टेंस ऑफ पीरियोडिक ऑबिट्स या सो आफ्टर दिस पार्ट वी आर गोइंग टू डू सम प्रॉब्लम्स ऑन सर्कल क्राइटेरिया पोपो क्राइटेरिया द सो कॉल्ड स्मॉल गेन थियरम दीज आर प्रॉब्लम विल डू इमीडिएटली आफ्टर वी फिनिश दिस for existence for non existence one thing one should notice in non linear dynamical systems in non linear control it is very hard to have necessary and sufficient conditions yeah even the lipschitz condition that we saw for existence of uh, solutions to differential equation that was only a sufficient condition for uh, existence yeah it is not necessary there can exist solutions uh, to differential equations even the even though the lipschitz condition is not satisfied in that sense the lipschitz condition is only a sufficient condition there so here also indeed existence of periodic orbits and non existence of periodic orbits seem like opposite but we have sufficient conditions for existence and sufficient condition for non existence yeah so in that sense we have uh, only seen one we will have seen only one part of it why because necessary and sufficient conditions for existence of periodic orbits is indeed a very difficult thing to have one, one requires to do to the best of my understanding still require research is required to be done to find necessary and sufficient conditions and often these are so complicated that at some point it becomes too artificial a little too artificial to pursue and have as a result so uh, recall that we had recall that we had said that when you have g as a transfer function a linear system linear time invariant system and a non linearity phi and you consider the describing function of this non linearity phi a uh, function of a and omega where a and omega are the amplitude and uh, frequency of this sinusoidal input at the entrance at the entry of the non linearity yeah so we have already assumed we have already noted that the higher harmonics of phi when when uh, if phi is time invariant non linearity then what comes and if phi is bounded input bounded output stable then what comes out here is also a periodic signal in the same period but it need not be a pure sinusoid it might have higher harmonics also it might have co sinusoids also but higher harmonics is being ignored when we define the describing function why because the describing function was defined using only the first harmonic of the fourier series the first fourier series coefficient uh, and this ignoring of higher harmonics was is justified if g is a low pass filter yeah so suppose suppose the nyquist plot of g looks like this and suppose the describing function uh, happened to be such that this is the plot of eta of a yeah for convenience we will assume that this is a function of only a otherwise we don't have this convenience of uh, uh, plotting them separately and just looking at the point of intersection if eta depended on a and omega then this point of intersection had to be correspond to the same frequency for the nyquist plot and also for the describing function eta a comma omega so now notice that the higher harmonics that are being ignored that might if they were not ignored then the intersection perhaps is not here but inside this ball inside this circle this is some circle of radius r where low pass means r is small but one can quantify exactly how small r is and one has to look at such a ball yeah now what is the sufficient condition for non existence 
a sufficient condition for, for non existence would be that this describing function this is eta of a this happened to be far such that such a ball even if you take such a circle even if you take such a ball and still there there is no intersection with the Nyquist plot of g for example here you see that this ball is just touching so how much big radius ball we should draw along the Nyquist along the disturbing function curve that depends on how much low pass g is why because the disturbing function indicates only the first harmonic and higher harmonics have to be ignored or not that depends on the extent to which g is low pass so let me just recapitulate this again so suppose this is the Nyquist plot of g the exact transfer function is not being discussed here suppose the describing function was like this that is one eta phi one a another one was like this n phi two a here this Nyquist this describing function curve has a function of a and the Nyquist plot do not intersect while in this case it intersects. So, just because it intersects perhaps we feel that yeah ok maybe uh, there exists a, a periodic solution I said that this was only approximation method, but does there exist one close by at least yes or no question we want to have for sure the value we might have uh, some inaccuracy that is acceptable. Here on the other hand we do not have intersection yeah, but notice that you may not have intersection even in this case. There, yeah, this is another let us say eta phi 3 a, but then here the ignoring of higher harmonics perhaps was playing a role, and if you had not ignored, maybe it did intersect. Yeah, so why it is reasonable to ask if a ball around this intersects or not. Here, such a ball, here, such a band. So, this is instead of a ball, we can move this ball around along this particular curve and see if that band intersects. If the band itself does not intersect this, then one might be safe, one might safely say that periodic solutions will not exist. One can go ahead and claim that periodic solutions do not exist if not just the in, not just non intersection of this disturbing function curve, but also non intersection of this band in which the thickness of the band depends on how much low pass the transfer function g is yeah the next harmonic how much the gain has decreased how much the gain of g how much in the body plot the magnitude plot magnitude curve has decreased compared to the frequency corresponding to the first harmonic yeah so this is one uh, so this gives us sufficient condition condition for non existence Now, we will say that what will happen if the band intersects, even if the band intersects or even if the curves intersect, it is still possible that when you include that band that time you uh, have non intersection yeah, the actual curve, the actual curve might be some curve inside this band that is why we have to check that the entire band is not intersecting and hence no curve inside this will also not intersect the Nyquist plot. So, now the next question is we are going to ask for sufficient condition for existence is the opposite of this a sufficient condition for existence what is the question we have obtained a sufficient condition for non existence namely the band around the disturbing function curve as a function of a look at the band and the band also does not intersect the Nyquist plot that non intersection of the band has been has been proved in Vidya Sagar's book as a sufficient condition for non existence of periodic orbits. What is the opposite of the statement that the band intersects yeah if the band intersects for example, in this case it is not necessary that the curve intersect yeah if the band intersects it might still happen that the curve actual curve also does not intersect just like this curve that we have shown here. So, that the, actually there are no periodic orbits. So, intersection of the band with the Nyquist plot is clearly not a sufficient condition for existence of periodic orbits yeah the opposite of this condition that the band intersects 
with the Nyquist plot, that band intersection with the Nyquist plot is clearly not a sufficient condition for existence of periodic orbits, but it turns out that it will be a necessary condition for existence of periodic orbits. Yeah, but it is still not sufficient clearly because look at this example here. The actual curve does not intersect, but the band intersects, the band is like this. And just because the band intersects does not mean that the first harmonic curve intersects, it does not mean that the actual curve intersects either. So, look at this example where the actual curve intersects, yeah. This also is not a sufficient condition for existence of periodic orbits because we, we know we are not sure that this eta phi 1 a is the actual curve. This is just the first harmonic. The actual curve might be something else. We need some condition that the actual curve intersects the Nyquist plot. Yeah, intersection of the actual curve which is all the harmonics considered together uh, loosely speaking that is the curve that we want to guarantee intersection then we will have a sufficient condition for existence of periodic orbits. So, I will construct an example where the first harmonic intersects at two points, but perhaps the actual curve is like this, actual curve does not intersect. Yeah, And the actual curve is of course, inside this band. So, inside this band, if it happens that the first harmonic curve intersects an Nyquist plot, but the actual one does not. That can happen if this band is sort of just touching or touching and intersecting at two at two points. If it is touching, then uh, clearly anything inside will not intersect at all. But if it is intersecting at two points, that also is a situation where uh, the actual curve perhaps may not intersect at all. The first harmonic curve might intersect at two points, two points very close to each other because of which the actual curve actually can escape, can escape, it need not. This is only a sufficient condition that we are aiming for. So, let us get a feeling for what is the sufficient condition for existence of a periodic orbit. So, here is an example. This is eta phi 1 a. This is the actual curve that escapes eta phi 1 actual a that is because there is it is of course, it has to be inside this band. Yeah, it is inside this band, this band around around this sorry, and this curve should not be so far from this. So, actual curve has escaped without intersecting the Nyquist plot. But we will like to say some there is some uh, property of the first harmonic that is allowing this to happen. Namely, inside that band, inside any inside any uh, small neighborhood, there are two intersections. But suppose this having function was such that inside that band, so this band is actually both in the omega. Yeah. So uncertainty in both a and omega yeah so you look at you look at this point of intersection of the disturbing function you look at some band around the amplitude uh, parameter some uncertainty along the omega parameter yeah this uh, the nyquist plot is where omega varies along the nyquist plot along the disturbing function curve is where the amplitude varies and inside this if you consider just these two, there is only one point of intersection. Yeah. In other words, we there is there is a certain function which is one to one. That one to one is being noticed by the fact that inside this band of frequencies and inside this band of amplitude, there is a unique intersection. That is precisely what is not happening here. Here along the omega along the amplitude band, there were two intersections. Yeah and this is the frequency band along the frequency band also there are these two intersections because of two intersections happening both within the same amplitude band and within the same omega band this situation that the actual dis actual curve escapes without intersection is possible yeah so if 
if in a band about a not and about omega not unique intersection yeah a not and omega not of course are the point of intersection of the disturbing function as a function of a and the next product as a function of omega but then there is an uncertainty there is a band around a not that we should be considering because of uh, ignoring the higher harmonics uh, that same reason also causes us to look for a band about omega not and inside this band also if this is a unique point of intersection then we will say that this is a sufficient condition yeah sufficient condition for existence for existence of what of periodic orbits so this has been proved in uh, vidya sagar's book on nonlinear systems that it has been of course proved far more rigorously and uh, the purpose of discussing this was just to give a feeling of what type of analysis arguments are used in uh, proving such statements so um, this is also again only a sufficient condition just uh, because this to say that this is not necessary means i would like to point out that even if there is a situation where it is not a unique intersection still the periodic orbits could exist in that sense this condition is only a sufficient condition it it is not a necessary condition for existence of periodic orbits so uh, this uh, has been described in detail in vidya sagar's book and we will not pursue this discussion further in this course so this uh, completes the topic of disturbing function we have also seen some problems where disturbing function uh, predicts the existence of certain periodic orbits how to find the amplitude and the frequency we also related that with uh, how popo criterion circle criteria also give a very similar band for non existence of periodic orbits why because they give a band for absolute stability and absolute stability automatically rules out periodic orbits it rules out instability also so we are going to now spend some time to solve some problems uh, involving popo criteria circle criteria and also important result called small gain theorem which we only barely touched in our previous uh, lectures problem solving for circle criteria popo criteria and uh, the small gain theorem so while solving this problems we will also very quickly recapitulate what these theorems are what these very celebrated results are so these these development of theory has happened over the last uh, 50 to 60 years and it's fundamental in the in the theory of nonlinear dynamical systems in fact the listeners are recommended strongly recommended to uh, have a look at the selected best 25 papers that appeared in the last century on nonlinear dynamical systems this is in a book uh, edited by agrawal in which uh, there are many papers that speak about uh, about these results and also further development after this the kalman yakubovich popov lemma circle criteria popov criteria the passivity theorem are uh, undoubtedly the strongest best results that has happened in control theory in nonlinear dynamical systems uh, so let us take an example of a transfer function s plus 1 over s minus 2 so this is the next plot is a circle as i said for first order systems the next plot is always a circle is it is a orientation that we have to spend more effort why because the real axis intersection are also very easy one is for s tending to infinity and the other intersection is for s equal to 0 so minus 1 by 2 so as i said one needs to have a good understanding of linear systems before one comes to nonlinear systems so one should be familiar with bode plot nyquist plot root locus for us to quickly benefit by using circle criteria 
this is where the pole is and this is where the 0 is. So, we know that for large gain the system closed loop will become stable, why because this is how the root locus is after some value it will become stable and hence when we blow this Nyquist plot large enough then this particular uh, right now we have one unstable pole. So, p is equal to 1 and it is not encircling the Nyquist the point minus 1. So, z will also be equal to 1. So, indeed there is one unstable pole for the closed loop for the closed loop suppose this is g equal to this. So, there is one unstable pole in the closed loop also for unity gain, but when we take a gain that is larger than 1 that is nothing but making this circle larger and larger and by making this circle larger than by multiplying this by 2 we know that this point come here. So, we know that for gain larger than 2 this will encircle the point minus 1 and then uh, there is no other change that can happen for larger gain. So, for gain larger than 2 we know that this will uh, have the closed loop pole would have come into the left half complex plane. So, we know that z will be equal to 0 for gain larger than 2. So, n has to be 1 n has to be plus 1 for gain larger than 2. So, if it has to be plus 1 then this orientation has to already be anti clockwise and yeah, that is the conclusion that we drew by using the Nyquist criteria where this is the number of anti clockwise encirclements. P is number of, of unstable open loop poles, open loop because we have nothing else in the feedback in the loop we have only transfer function g and hence it is ok to call this open loop poles, while z is the number of closed loop poles, number of unstable closed loop poles. The number of unstable closed loop poles z is what we want to find out by using the Nyquist criteria for stability. So, now we know that these all points are uh, so these all points here are the ones that are encircled the correct number of points and so are these points also. For this point for example, corresponding to plus 1 by 2 that corresponds to a gain of k equal to minus 2. So, what the circle criteria says? From the Nyquist criteria we know that these all points in the interior the diameter are the ones that are encircled p number of times. If you want z to be equal to 0 then you should look for those points on the real axis which are encircled exactly p number of times. If p is equal to 1 like in our example then look for all those points on the real axis which correspond to which happen to get encircled p number of times anti clockwise and that gives us points and from those points we can translate to gains. So, k is equal to minus 2 will correspond to an input output map u y where this is the k the input is u output is y. So, k equal to minus 2 is a line with negative slope like this. So, now the suppose somebody says what about this yeah this suppose this is happens to be slope 3 yeah slope 3 slope equal to 3, then that 3 corresponds to a point minus 1 by 3. Is the point minus 1 by 3 inside the circle? Yes. Yeah. Is it encircled p number of times anti clockwise? What is p? p is equal to 1. Yeah. So, it is encircled 1 number of times anti clockwise. So, 3 is also line that stabilizes. If you put k equal to 3, that will also result in closed loop stability. So, the Nyquist criteria very easily gives us a sector corresponding to lines that all cause closed loop stability. Now, this is what we get by the Nyquist criteria already. The circle criteria says that you take you take corresponding to that same diameter you construct a circle. If you have to now construct a circle and that circle also should get encircled p number of times that circle might that diameter might have to be smaller yeah this this is easily seen for 
various other examples. In this case, you make the circle as large as possible and it will indeed come out to be the same circle. So, for first order systems, it will turn out that the sector of linearities is the same as sector of nonlinearities. And this is an important conclusion worth noting down. Check that sector of linearities. So, the sector of linearities will turn out to be a open set in the all the slope values that cause uh, closed loop stability, those values, the slopes will be the sector of linearities that will be an open set. Yeah? The boundaries will not get included because the boundaries will cause imaginary axis poles of the closed loop is equal to sector of and if we are using the circle criteria, then this is, is time possibly time varying, yeah? possibly time varying. When will for what kind of systems are these going to be equal? For for first order. Why would this happen? Because for first order systems, the Nyquist plot itself is uh, a circle, and because it is a circle, the circle criteria, the largest circle will also happen to be the same circle. Yeah, the largest circle will be either the largest sector. The circle corresponding to the largest sector will either be the largest circle inside this or it will be the smallest circle outside this. When will it be outside this? Because that it can also happen that the open loop is already stable. Yeah, we will see another one such example. Take s plus 1 over s plus 2. Here we have 1 by 2, 1 a circle like this for uh, s equal to 0 we have that it starts here and then uh, this one is high pass filter first we encounter a 0 and then a pole. So, the phase will be would be increasing and hence this is the orientation. So, here when we have n is equal to p minus z there are some points which correspond to negative gain that cause instability to the system and those points are indeed getting encircled clockwise. Yeah? Why would, uh, why is it expected that it will get encircled clockwise? If for some point z should be equal to plus 1, we already have this minus sign here and p is equal to 0. So, n would have to be minus 1, n would have to be negative. That is why these points would have to get encircled clockwise to begin with. Why uh, is p 0? Because the open loop is already stable. So, now these are all points for which are encircled p number of times. Uh, what is p? p is 0. So, these all the points on the real axis which are outside the circle correspond to those which are encircled the correct number of times. So, circle criteria is what is the circle criteria? Look for look for segment encircled p number of times anti clockwise yeah what is p about it p is the number of unstable open loop poles so if you encircle the a point any point on this segment p number of times that will be a linearity that causes closed loop stability so that why because it ensures that z is equal to 0 but then of course a sector of non linearities will also have linearities so, that is why this segment had better be encircled. Now, you not just this segment, it is not enough that this segment is encircled, but one should also have take a circle with this segment as the diameter. Even the circle has to get encircled if you have to allow not just linearities, but time varying, possibly time varying non linearities. Yeah? So, circle with this segment, circle with, with such a segment as diameter yeah might have to make might require shortening of segment so what about in this case see these are this the segment is everything outside except this diameter yeah so one can in principle actually take such a circle so, here if p is equal to 0, 
then all these points should not get encircled. So one such one se one such circle is this. This this uh, segment is not encircled by the Nyquist plot, and hence one can take this circle. One can take a larger circle also. Yeah, one can take this point left and left, and the same thing is allowed here also. And in fact, one can take the two things together also. Yeah, then it will be that this Nyquist plot is encircled inside such a circle. When would this happen if the open loop is already stable and that sector contains a vertical axis also? In such a situation, this would get allowed. So, here is an example where the largest sector, that largest sector corresponds to everything from everything except this. Yeah, this is uh, the line with slope minus 1, this is the slope line with slope minus 2, everything excluding this, excluding this, yeah, please note. So, one can take anything inside this sector and that will cause closed loop stability, even if these, even if the nonlinearities inside the sector are time varying. So, now we will see how the sector of linearities could be strictly smaller than the sector of non-linearities, if you allow time varying for example. So, consider, so I should note that this has to be a second order system. So, we had considered this example in a similar context yesterday, this is 1 by 2. This is a point minus 1. So, is this, so the open loop is already stable. We always have this. So, with phi equal to 1, with phi equal to the unity feedback with the negative sign, is the closed loop stable? Yeah, it is stable because uh, the open loop is already stable and the point minus 1 is encircled 0 number of times and hence z is also equal to 0. So, in this equation n is equal to p minus z, p is equal to 0 because the open loop is stable, n is 0 because we are considering unity feedback and hence we are considering encirclements of the point minus 1. So, it does not encircle the point minus 1, hence n is 0 and that gives us z also equal to 0. What about some other point? What about this point? It is a minus 1 by 3, minus 1 by 3 point is also encircled 0 number of times and hence the closed loop is stable. What about this sector? What about the sector of linearities? Sector of linearities just requires us to check whether the segment is encircled 0 number of times. Why 0? Because p is equal to 0. Yeah, the entire segment is not encircled. So, n is equal to 0 for that segment also and that gives us that we have a closed loop stability for a sector of linearities for any line inside the sector also. So, one can consider making this left and left until it goes in principle to infinity. Yeah, so, one can take this entire sector 0 to infinity, this is u, this is y. For any line inside this sector, it is some line with positive slope, that slope suppose it is k, then you look for the point minus 1 by k and that happens to be a point on this negative real axis and it is encircled 0 number of times. So, does that mean that we can take a circle? The circle cannot be taken for arbitrary. Yeah. So, you see this if this circle comes more and more to the left, then at some point it will intersect this. If you take a k that happens to be very large, let us say k is equal to 1000, that will correspond to the point minus 1 over 1000, which is far inside, inside this uh, cave. Well, let us call this a cave. And then when you construct a circle, it will insert the, intersect the Nyquist plot. So, the entire circle is not being encircled p number of times. The Nyquist plot should not be touching such a circle. Yeah? So, clearly there is a, there is the, the largest sector cannot be too large. If you, are in, if you are concerned with 0 to infinity, then it can go only up to a value k max, yeah, k max 
come correspond to the circle criteria and it will it will be open at some point it will intersect. So, this how to find this k max th that is nothing but you can take such a vertical line. If you take such a vertical line then you can get from 0 up to this particular k max uh, that k max will be found as you take this point find its real part and one, one over that will give us k max circle circle for circle criteria. If one wants to go for higher sector, if one wants to go for larger, then one has to, one can't start from 0. Yeah. So, let us uh, draw another figure to explain this. So, if you use the technique that we disc, uh, discussed yesterday for finding the leftmost point yeah, on the Nyquist plot, the part that causes real uh, part of g of j omega to reach a minima. If we plot that, then we will get this and suppose this value is equal to minus 1 by 50, yeah, then we will get 0 to 50 as a sector of time invariant, time time varying sector, sector time varying non-linearities. Of course, time varying non-linearities includes time invariant non-linearities also, it includes lines also, but time varying means possibly time varying and possibly non-linear. Suppose you want, does this mean that 50 to 55 sector is not allowed? Yeah, the minus 1 by 55 might be here. Such a circle is also clearly uh, encircled 0 number of times. Yeah. So, if you do not want to start from 0, what I mean to say is, if you want the sec sector of nonlinearities to be varying only between 50 and 55, yeah, then you can that circle is also encircled correct number of times. So, the lower value also plays a role in how much high you can go. This 50 can't be made larger because you are starting from 0, because the nonlinearities could be time varying and could be varying from 0 up to 50. But if then if you say that the time varying nonlinearities will vary from only let us say 49, then perhaps one can go up to 55 and yeah, this depends on the Nyquist plot to uh, what extent high you can go and that depends on from where the nonlinearities, from what value, from what sector it starts, from what slope it starts. So, this is uh, an example where the sector of linearities is strictly different, strictly larger than the sector of non-linearities for using the circle criteria and there we saw that the lower value also plays a role as to how high you can make this slope. What about the sector of 0 to infinity we already verified yesterday, sector of time invariant. non-linearities. For the same example, what is the sector of non-linearities we can, what is the sector of time invariant non-linearities? We can have up to 0, from 0 to infinity. The highest value can go as large as infinity because the Popo plot, using the Popo plot we verified that a line with positive slope can be taken to intersect very close to 0 at minus 0 0.0001 also and still we can have that the line is to the left of the Popo plot. So, we will now see an example of where the small gain theorem can be used. The small gain theorem for stable G s only. The circle criteria allows for unstable transfer functions also the sector of non-linearities can be found even when g is unstable because in that case when p is not equal to 0, when p is 1 or 2 or more, that time such a circle has to just get encircled p number of times. This is what the small gain theorem does not allow because the small gain theorem considers sector of the type minus gamma to gamma. It considers such sectors only. In other words, these are sectors which are symmetric about the horizontal axis. This is a line with slope minus gamma, this is a line with slope gamma and any sector within this, any nonlinearity, possibly time varying inside this only is allowed. So, in, in particular, 
the line with slope 0 is also allowed which means that open loop already has to be stable. If you have if you want closed loop stability for this sector then you are allowing you are insisting on closed loop stability for line for the line with 0 slope which is nothing but open loop. Because of the symmetry of this sector, this plus and minus sign does not play a role as far as the small gain theorem is concerned. So, if you allow a line with slope 0 also inside this sector, whenever a line with slope 0 is allowed inside the sector, that time that is like saying y equal to 0 even when u is non 0, which means that g has to already be stable. Now, only when you have open loop stability this so you can have you can ask for absolute stability of the sector that also has 0. So, that is why small gain theorem is relevant only for stable g because we are considering some such sectors which have 0 also inside it. In, in fact, here it is symmetric about the 0 about the line with slope 0. So, what does the small gain theorem say? The small gain theorem says that absolute stability for g between and sector sector bound time varying nonlinearities in the range minus gamma to gamma in this slope if g the induced L2 norm is strictly less than 1 by gamma. Yeah, what does this mean? Of course, this already and g is stable. Writing this L2 here induced L2 norm already implies that g is stable. It has no pose on the imaginary axis, it has no pose in the right half plane. So, what does this mean in terms of the Nyquist product of g? The Nyquist product of g is at most gamma away. In fact, it is the no point on the Nyquist plot is equal to gamma or more away from the origin. So, if this is a circle of radius 1 by gamma, then the Nyquist plot is contained inside this. Nyquist plot plot of g. In the Nyquist plot of g need not be a circle because g could be of any order. It need it, it could pass through the origin etcetera, but it should be contained inside a circle of radius 1 by gamma and centered at the origin, centered at, at the origin. So, a statement that the L2 norm of G which is nothing but the supremum over all omega in R of G of J omega and this is what we already saw in a previous lecture that was about norms of uh, signals and of operators. There we saw that the L2 induced norm is nothing but the large farthest point on the of the Nyquist plot uh, from the origin. And to say that this is strictly less than 1 by gamma means that the Nyquist plot is contained inside this. So, this small gain theorem involves if you if you are asked find the largest sector using the small gain theorem such that you have absolute stability of interconnection of B of G and sector bound nonlinearities of this form that involves finding the smallest circle, smallest circle that contains the Nyquist product of G and of course, G has to already be stable. So, let us write this as a problem. Consider G of S equal to 1 over S square plus S plus 2. Find largest sector of the form minus gamma to gamma such that absolute stability. What is absolute about it? 
the stability we are able to conclude we are asked to conclude stability for not just one nonlinearity inside this sector but for a whole class of nonlinearities yeah that is what is absolute about it for not just one nonlinearity but a whole class of nonlinearities absolute stability is stability for all nonlinearities possibly time varying time varying possibly time varying inside the sector hmm? in in sector minus gamma to gamma so if this is the question that we have been asked we notice that the sector that has been specified is of the form minus gamma to gamma hence it is small gain theorem that we will use the next is plot of this transfer function looks like this this is uh, 1 by 2 now we uh, notice that any point here for example on the real axis also corresponds to a point line inside uh, inside such a sector so we are now going to look at the at the point that is farthest from the origin yeah so perhaps the point that is farthest from the origin is here so then the smallest circle will be just tangential to this uh, let me draw another figure where uh, this is better visible. This is the smallest circle with center at origin and encircling. Of course, if we did not have to encircle this, one could make it even smaller and containing, containing Nyquist plot of G. Where this, of course, this is the G. G is Nyquist plot. So, how will we find uh, how will you find the radius of such a circle? All one has to do is look at the farthest point. In this case, it might be here. Look at the distance of the farthest point from the origin. Do one over that and that will give us the radius of the smallest circle centered at the origin that contains this. So, clearly this forces one way to find this is consider consider Bode plot Bode magnitude plot of G of S. the the peak value the peak value peak value yeah suppose this corresponds to some minus minus 2 db for example yeah so this peak value is uh, equal to g l2 norm yeah of course when g is stable this we had seen in detail in our previous lecture on uh, norms of signals and of operators. So, when G is stable, so this of course, we are not interested in dB, we want the exact value. Yeah? This peak value is also the farthest point on the Nyquist plot, farthest from the origin, the distance of the farthest point from the origin on the Nyquist plot. So, this will decide, suppose this is equal to my Suppose this is an absolute value, this is equal to point, point 0.9. Hmm. Then uh, I am taking rough values here, yeah, I could be wrong here. So, one will say that largest sector 
minus 1 over 0.9 to 1 over 0.9. Yeah, and open brackets, one cannot take equal to 1 over 0.9 because that will uh, cause the circle to touch the next plot, it will intersect and yeah, that is not allowed. Hmm? So, that is why we are saying only open bracket, largest sector using small gain theorem. So, coming back to this example, what would the circle criteria say in this case? Circle criteria is not forced to have the cir circle, the smallest circle centered at the origin. The circle criteria also allows the smallest circle to contain the Nyquist plot. Why is it allowed to contain? Because G is already stable. Since G is stable, the circle does not have to be encircled, but the circle can in fact encircle the Nyquist plot of G. So, but the smallest circle is not forced to have its center at the origin, so hence the smallest circle could have this point, this as the diameter. Yeah, so one can think of the smallest circle like this. So, if one removes the constraint that the center of the smallest circle should be at the origin, it could be somewhere to the to the right of the origin for this example, then the circle can become smaller. So, the, in such a case of course, the sector that you get the largest sector will not be symmetric about the horizontal axis. Yeah. So, this is an example where the circle criteria is closely linked to the small gain theorem, the criteria of the largest sector that we get from the small gain theorem, only that the small gain theorem forces that the sector is of the type minus gamma to gamma. In other words, the, it is symmetric about the horizontal axis, while the circle criteria allows from minus gamma min to gamma max. It allows of this type also, where it is not symmetric about the horizontal axis, this value and this value need not be equal. So, we will see some more examples if possible before we start our last topic, which is namely tangent spaces and manifolds. That is what we will see in the following lecture. This uh, completes uh, several problems on uh, small gain theorem or circle criteria and popo criteria. Thank you.